Hey everyone, I want to show you one of the first projects I worked on that I actually got paid on uh, with PHP. It was an event management app where you could add events to a map and then there is more complicated stuff but the you know the simplest piece is adding events to a database and then displaying them on a map and I decided to use Mapbox for this. Uh, Google Maps is very popular but Mapbox definitely makes things cost effective and it's very easy to use. So we'll have this basic interface where you can put in a name, description, and address, and then you'll have a marker. You see this little um, rocket pop up on your map. As always, there's going to be source code on the Cinder website as well as the entire written guide if you need to reference some code, copy and paste some stuff, and then some useful links that'll get you to the Mapbox site. We'll start off with some basic HTML which will render out this right here. And I already have that in my, um, in my project, right? I have some link, link tags, I have some basic HTML, I have my CSS file that I made with Tailwind, and then some more dependencies for Mapbox. And that will get you to this right here, okay? My map is gonna go here, my form is here, and then we'll render out a geocoder component as well. So let's get started. The first piece is gonna be initializing your map, okay? This is done with your Mapbox token, which we can get from the account.mapbox.com. You have to log in, create an account, and then you have a public token there. And so then you have a map that's centered on these coordinates. You can set them to whatever you'd like, and it has a default zoom to it as well. And so if I save this and refresh, we now render out a map. You'll notice there are no markers in here except for the default things that Mapbox tells us what to do. And we can play with that in these entire settings. And you know you can go into real good depth with this custom map style, makes it pretty easy. Or you can just visit the documentation. We'll accept the default styles for now. So now we want to render, or at least tell our map to say, hey, when we have events, we want to render out um, icons for them and so I'll walk you through this big old function that when the map loads we're gonna add a source and the source is called places and so all of my icons will fall under the places category they'll be geojson so that's the data we're gonna pass to it right so when we create our backend API it's gonna pull from a database we're gonna put it into this geojson format and then this feature collection is just a, um, a identifier here we're gonna set this to be an uh, an empty array. Now this array actually contains our data of events. And so right now it's empty because I don't have any events initialized, so we'll add it later. But if you wanted to have some default events or some default icons to always show up in your map, regardless of if your API is linked or not, this is where you'd set that up. Then we add that as a layer, um, this places piece here, right? We reference it and we say we're just gonna have an icon. The icon will actually specify in our backend, so you can have custom icons per event. Then we're gonna handle a pop-up. So when you click on the icon, it's gonna read the coordinates, um, take a measurement, and then create a, um, a box at those coordinates, right? So at these coordinates that we calculated, we're gonna create a box that you can click on. And then if you mouse over, it'll have a pointer. And if not, it'll be uh, just regular, okay? So from here, we basically do our, okay, if we have an event, let's handle it. Well, so now we actually have to populate this guy with events, all right? So the way we'll do that is we'll write another function called get all events, okay? So I'm referencing this function in my, you know, uh, onload function, but now we're gonna actually get all the events. So I'm gonna go to my Cinder guide and I'm gonna use this. And this is a very generic jQuery function here um, that has an asynchronous request to an endpoint on your server, an external server, maybe a Lambda function, but Either way, it's calling some kind of backend file. So this is getAllEvents.php. If I go to API, get all events, it's an empty file right now. But we'll get all the events. It specifies us that this is a JSON file. And then we're going to parse those events. And then we're going to add those events, right? The event data, that array that I was talking about that's empty up here, into our actual um, <clears throat> map, our map array of events, okay? So we can also console log the event data if there is an endpoint. Now, if I was going to do this right now, if I refresh this and I inspect element, our console should be empty because we did not get any data from our um, actual function, right? So let's see, yt, get all events. This right now has no success because there is no data, okay? 
So what we'll do is we'll next move on to get all events. And so we need to connect up to a database first. And I have some basic examples of what this will look like on PHP My Admin. So I'll go ahead and open that up uh, for us here. By the way, I'm using WAMP WAMP to host my uh, server, and that gives me PHP My Admin. I didn't use this for the longest time, but it's actually pretty helpful when you're developing locally. So all you'll do is create a new database, give it a name. I called it Mapbox Events. Uh, create an events table, and it's going to look a little something like, where's our structure? You have a name, description, a latitude, longitude, and an auto-incrementing ID. And if I look in here, well, we'll have all of these cool little uh, places, right? So I can delete all of these so we don't have any um, data from my, my test project here. And we'll connect up to this database. So let's go here. Uh, we need to include a database file. And I'm just going to include some basic, basic database connection code that already has my password in it, my username that I used to log on, localhost, the database that I selected, right, that corresponds to this right here. And then we have a try catch block that will connect PDO. PDO is a more secure way to connect to your database as opposed to MySQLi or I think MySQL Query. That's also one out there. And... <clears throat> We're going to use that to connect to the project so we can prevent MySQL injections since we're handling form submission as well. All right, so we connect to this database here, and I go to get all events now, and I want to start pulling data from my database. So I'll go back to the Cinder guide, and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to have a basic select all from events, right? So let's open up our PHP guy up here. We're going to do select all from events. So this is going to get all of the data from the events and store it in this database table. And fetch associated will keep this as, a, as an object more so than an array that's indexed. And so we're going to use that data. We're going to loop through it and construct that GeoJSON that I was telling you about earlier that Mapbox will actually parse, read, and ingest as data, OK? And then we just need to set up our file and say, OK, let's include this, this database file to tell us how to connect. We're going to output all of our data as JSON. And finally, we're going to echo out this return data, that GeoJSON that we created here. And really, this is just a multidimensional array that I created for you. Um, I had to kind of you know, reverse engineer it from what Mapbox uses. And so if we go to get all events right now as an API endpoint, right? we have this API folder. So mapbox events yt slash let's go api slash what is this get all events.php we should get something and what do we get we get some errors right memory left x large huh i wonder what's going on database select to json encode no i mean this should all be good Okay, this is okay. We have an undefined variable return data. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, what it's saying is that if we don't, we never set return data, right? So, I tested this and everything already had data in it. But return data should just be an empty array from the start, and then we should push into this array. So, right now it's an empty array. And then if I add something into my MySQL database using this basic insert command, insert in events, this test database, hit go, and I refresh this API, now I have things in my array that are going to output on the map. And so let's see if we can go into our SRC folder. We load up the map, and look at that. It's an event. And remember how we had an on-click element there? If we click on this, manual MySQL test event. So if I wanted to keep adding events into here, I would just add this to this table right here. Now, since I created this cool little form so that maybe you have like a backend user that just manages this without accessing PHP My Admin, we can now include things like a geocoder. And so the basic file we need is create event, right? So we'll have a create event file. We link up to the database. We check if we pass some data, right? Because eventually we're gonna post data to this file. And then we're going to insert into our database. And this is your basic MySQL, insert into events, name, description, latitude, longitude, values, and then all of those kind of um, prepared statements, right? That corresponds to this array of variables that has a key value pair for, you know, so this name corresponds to this prepared statement name, corresponds to this key, corresponds to this value. A little bit redundant if you ask me, but not too bad. So 
we have name, post, name, description, post. So basically we need a post to create event.php. And if we post the correct data, it's gonna add it in, return a status code of success. So let's just go in here and create a function called create events. Um, and we're gonna call this function on an onclick element that says add event up here. So let me go to my cinder guide. Okay, so we have, add, we have a generic add event function, right? So in my add event, I'm gonna have that same asynchronous request to create event.php, this file in my API folder. It's gonna be a post, um, a post, uh, uh, what, action, right? A post action that's gonna to pass to create event. What is it gonna pass? It's gonna pass a post object. And that post object, we expect to have all of these little attributes. And then it's gonna say it's JSON and then we should have a success handler. So if it's successful. Well, before we get a post object, we need to initialize this event address because I don't wanna type in latitudes and longitudes. That seems a little bit difficult. So let's initialize a geocoder. And guess what? Mapbox makes this really easy. So I'm gonna paste down some Mapbox code here. And what we'll do is we'll create a geocoder using our access token that we got from account.mapbox.com. We're gonna add um, this to our geocoder. So ID is equal to geocoder. That's down here. So I created a geocoder div for us already in the basic HTML. That's gonna generate a geocoder. And then on result, we're gonna set a variable, just a global variable geocoder result that we're gonna access later when we're adding the event um, in, in, uh, in this uh, on event handler, this listener. And then on clear, we're gonna get rid of the result as well. So if we refresh now, look at that, we have a geocoder um, input field. And if you're like, well, this is just a regular input field, it's not. If I start typing stuff in, it's gonna actually autocorrect. So Arlington, Texas will autocorrect and it will store data on you know this, this location. So if I go in here and I say geocoder result, I get a global, a globally accessed variable. So this isn't, you know, like React where you gotta uh, somehow dig it under your, your mattress to find it. No, I just have a global variable I can access anywhere about the center, about the names, about the text, about everything that we just put into my geocoder result. Okay, so when I hit add, we should compile this post event, op or sorry, post object based off of the geocoder, based off of this input, this input, and then we'll pass it here. So let's define that post object. I'll go in here, add event. We define that post object. And if you see, I added if geocoder, if geocoder result is blank, an empty object, then let's not proceed, okay? So you could add, you know, additional validation here in order to, um, you make sure maybe like you want a certain length or it's required or, you know, maybe some like star rating or something like that, right? Um, this is where you'd have additional validation and you'd return false if you didn't want to do it. And then you will create a post object based off of jQuery's pull from the event name, the event description, and then we pull from geocoder result dot center dot one. So geocoder result, right? Dot center dot one latitude longitude. And then, you know, if you wanted to save in your database, the actual physical, or sorry, the kind of semantic name of the uh, place, you could save these things as well. And so now if I save this and refresh, hopefully I say test event and I have a description, I'll just say test and let's just go Langley. And then what do we get? Langley Park, Langley Air Force Base, Langley, Virginia, Washington. Here we go. Add to map. Okay, so something errored. And let's see what happened because we should have at least cleared it if um, we had successfully added it. But I don't think that I added the success code. So let's refresh our page again here real quick. Okay, so let's add our success code in. So if we had a successful response, we're gonna set the value to zero, clear the geocoder, and then we're gonna get all of our events, okay? Now I'm expecting when I refresh my screen here, that we'd have another little icon here. If I refresh, something went in, right? So I think it just based off of the coordinates, it didn't actually show up on the correct part of the map. So let's test another location. Let's let's test the Catholic University of America. So we'll say, um, we just say CAU, and then test to, and then Catholic University of America. All right, I think this one should be correct. 
add event. All right, we got blocked again. Let's refresh. All right, so at least it added it there correctly, but for some reason, we're not getting the correct response, and that's because I need a conditional statement that says if response is equal to success, then we're gonna clear this, right? And let's see, is our network posting some kind of success? Get all events. Let's test it again, A, B, and then let's go Arlington. Add event, there you go, it clears. So I wasn't being, uh, how do you say this, specific enough. And so now we should have a complete application. So if I pick, let's say, Prospect Street Northwest, so I'll go Prospect Street event, pool event, and then I say Prospect Street Northwest, uh, I think it's this guy right here, District of Columbia, add event, there's your event. And if I refresh this screen, we go back to Prospect Street, our event is there, we can click on it. And you can do anything you want with this. You can, this is HTML that goes into this um, get all events. So you can have an anchor tag, maybe linking to a, an external page for that event, and you can just really run wild with it. So if you have any questions, let me know. As always, source code is in the Cinder guide. I hope this helps.